What is up, creator? We are going to revisit the animated lower thirds for OBS. We're going to talk about the memory slots and some of the settings and parameters that are involved with it. We're also going to clear up some confusion that you may be having with the tool. We're going to make it all simple for you right now. Let's get some. Our community here on YouTube is growing exponentially and there are some creators that really go the extra mile for this channel and one of those creators is Rider of Dinosaurs. Now the reason why I mentioned this great creator is because he helped me understand how this darn tool actually works. It is very unintuitive in my opinion and I was having a high level of difficulty wrapping my head around how to work these memory slots. And so Rider of Dinosaurs went the extra mile and made me a video. We have since been in contact with each other. He's out of England and he has done a fantastic job. So I want to let you know if you're interested in debunking some of the craziness that is online in regards to like Flat Earth and other crazy stuff, his channel is the place to go. It is absolutely funny. Visit the Rider of Dinosaurs channel and check it out for yourself. You're going to love it. This OBS Lower Thirds tool is absolutely powerful. Wait till you see what these memory slots can do. Here we go. Okay, there's a few of you that say that I'm talking a little bit too fast for my tutorials and I'm going to try to slow it down just a little bit so that you can digest how this thing works. When you look at this thing for the first time, common sense would say, oh, I've got four entry boxes for four individual lower third animations. But that's not necessarily true. What's actually true is that each box represents 10 lower thirds that you can enter. And the reason why there are four boxes is because if you click the little clock icon right here, it clamshells open and it allows you to enter in your own custom times that will override the main setting custom times here. So what these times represent is that the first entry here, two seconds, represents the transition time in and transition time out for the lower third, okay? The next box represents the time that the lower third stays in view and box three represents the time at which the box is not viewable. So that's what the times mean and that's why we have four different individual entry boxes because it gives you four ways to add your own custom in out transition not seen times. That's all it means. What's important to understand is that when you go into one single box here You've got these memory slots, and every one of these memory slots allows you to enter different text and a different image for your lower third. Pretty cool, huh? That's a lot of lower thirds. So now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the red square. This is confusing a lot of people, and it's changed from the previous version to this newer version, which is 1.6. Actually, the red square represents two different kinds of states in regards to inactivity. I'll explain it in just one sec. There are two ways that the animated lower third tool can be inactive. The first one is when you turn on the lower third box without first turning on the main settings. Main settings must be turned on in order for the lower third box to function. Okay? The second way is when you have the lower third box set up to cycle from one memory slot to the next and every time the lower third comes into view and leaves the time by which the lower third is not visible is treated as inactivity so if i turn off the parameter that stops it from cycling watch this i'm going to turn it on watch watch the blue line the lower third goes out of view boom it goes to red and then it comes to the next one, turns it back on, and the blue line comes back on. So sometimes when you have the parameters uh, checked off in such a way, the box may remain in the red state, even, even though, though the, the main, main setting, setting switch, switch is, is turned, turned on. on. And this causes an enormous amount of confusion. And uh, I have to admit, it confused me for a very long time. In fact, I thought that the software was broken, or I thought my OBS program was not operating properly because I didn't understand these two inactivity states. I think for version 1.7, the developer should choose a third color that represents when the lower third comes out of view. That way there's no confusion between the, the two inactivity states. 
Okay, so let's enter a memory slot for the first lower third entry box, okay? So I'm gonna click the three dots here in the Your Logo here. I'm gonna click Choose Image, and I've already created some graphics and moved them into the Program Files, OBS-Studio, Animated-Lower-Thirds, and then the Logos folder. That's where these graphics must reside. And if you're going to make your own graphic, I highly recommend that you reference one of the original graphics that are located in this folder, logo lower score one, two, three, or four. Open one of those up inside of your photo editor. Use that same dimension, plop your graphic inside of it, and then save it as a different name and use the PNG extension. Okay, so as long as they reside in this folder, you're good. I'm going to use the Lady Quato image here. Quato 2, I'll hit open hit OK, and then I'm going to add the name Quato. And if anybody can tell me where Quato comes from, here's a hint. In the second uh, line here for the lower third, I'll enter location. Mars, if anybody can tell me what Quato is, I think the image gives it away, so does the location. And now I'm going to click the first memory slot, and, and nothing happens. Now, I, this may be specific to my system, but nothing shows up, no gray box appears when I click it, but when I switch on the lower third, it turns on, and there the lower third appears. And I'm gonna turn it off now. So that's how I enter the first lower third. If you notice now the box is gray with a little dot in the lower left-hand corner, that's a little message to tell you that this lower third now has a custom graphic designated, which is the Quato graphic, okay? Now I'm going to make a second one now, and this is where it gets kind of confusing because there is no button that creates an empty memory slot. Basically all you have to do is type over it. So I'm gonna type this as Mr. Happy, okay? Location Detroit, right? And I'm gonna click the graphic, the three, the three dots here, choose image, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna select the dog here, hit open, hit okay. And now I'm going to select the next empty slot. Okay, again, nothing shows up, but when I turn it on, that box appears. And the lower third shows up. Now, take a look now. Remember I told you that the red line has two meanings. One is whether or not the main setting is turned on. Right, if I turn it off, you get a red box. But if I turn it back on, you'll notice that the lower third box is switching back and forth from blue to red. As soon as the lower third is out of view, the box is designated as inactive and it switches over to red. So it gets kind of confusing in that respect. Now, the next thing that we're gonna look at are the parameters here, the little lightning bolt, the recycle button, and the time button, just so that you can wrap your head around what these mean. Because sometimes if these aren't set correctly, this red box will appear all the time and you'll say to yourself, wait, well, this program's not actually working. It is working. It's just that you don't have the settings set up properly. Let's get into that now. Okay, let's get into some of these parameters here just so that you get a global perspective on what's happening. If the icon is gray, that means it is not active, okay? If it's white, it is active. So for example, this little lightning icon, if I click it, it says turns on the switch automatically when a slot memory is loaded. That means that when you click the memory slot, what it's gonna do is automatically un switch the, the lower third box. So right now it's turned on, right? And you get the blue square. If I turn it off and I click the memory slot, it's gonna turn it on automatically, watch. See that? So it's just another way of quickly turning on the lower third box, all right? That's what that means. The next one is this little recycle icon. And let me turn the box off real quick. All right, so I'm gonna turn it on. And what this does is it runs through each and every single memory slot inside the box, okay? So if I turn on the, the lower third one box now, it'll cycle through Quato, watch it go away. The next one blinks and Mr. Happy comes in. Now pay attention to these little tiny squares to the right of the memory slots. Can you see them counting down? The top box re represents the amount of time that it is in view, and the bottom box is the countdown for the amount of time that it is out of view. That's all that represents, all right? The clock clamshells the custom time fields below. Can you see that? That's all that does. 
And so these times override the main setting times, okay? The padlock has got me confused a little bit. I thought what it meant was that when you click the padlock, it overrides the padlock time in the main setting, but yet it leaves the uh, transition time and the non-view time alone, but it, I'm having trouble with it. So I'd like to know if you can give me some insight on that in comments, I'd greatly appreciate it. The actual purpose of the padlock, I don't know, it might be my software, it could be funky, who knows. I can tell you with uh, confidence that there is something a little bit funky going on with how the memory slots are erased. Let me show you. So if I turn off the lower third box here and I decide to delete one of these memory slots by clicking and holding, it'll blink red. Here it goes. And I let go, it doesn't go away. It, it's gray and it doesn't go away. If I turn on the lower third, boom, it goes away. I believe that that's not the way it should act. Uh, from what I've seen from other people, when it begins to blink red and then you let go of your mouse, it just disappears. But for some reason, it's not doing it for my program for some reason. So, But that that is how you uh, are able to delete memory slots. Another way of doing it is by clicking it. So we're at Mr. Happy now. It's white. If you click the X here, it says clear the text fields and set the logo to default. Watch. Boom. So just basically erased it that way. That's another way of deleting it. So just want to let you know that that's how it's done. Okay, I wanted to go over two possible reasons why the lower third won't have any animation. The first one is if you put in a long length of time when it is not visible. So I'm putting in 33 seconds, and when I turn it on, it will show Paul come in, and when he goes away, it stays invisible for 33 seconds. That's a long time, and it makes you think that it's broken. So... Make sure that it's not a super long length of time here. That way you know it's working. You can adjust it later. So I'm going to turn it off, and I'm going to put that 33 seconds as 2 seconds. And this time we're going to talk about this little icon right here, and it says, turns off the lower third switch when it goes into an inactive state. So what that means is when I turn it on, first I'll turn this on. When I turn on the toggle, it's going to cycle Paul Peck's lower third, and when it goes out of view, it will become inactive and it will turn off this toggle again. Watch. I'll turn it on. Paul comes in. Then he leaves. And watch the toggle. Boom. Toggle goes off. So that one, too, will confuse a lot of people and make you think that this thing is broken. Just understand that it is a automatic toggle turn off when the first animation is complete in its cycle. I'm not sure why they would have this because this causes a ton of confusion. I wanna remind you that I read all my comments and if you have an idea that would fit this channel in regards to a tutorial that would help you with YouTube, let me know in comments and if uh, it does fit the channel, I will make you a tutorial and give you a shout out. Check out this video, it explains how to install this tool, there's a couple steps to it, it's not that bad. I will see you over there. Regardless, I want to tell you to keep on fighting, do not stop posting, you will win eventually. The struggle to win here at the venue is the adventure. I will catch you on the flip side, stay strong and keep fighting. Yeah.